สวัสดีค่ะขอต้อนรับเข้าสู่การอบรมครูผู้สอนภาษาอังกฤษซึ่งจัดโดยมูลนิธิการศึกษาทางไกลผ่านดาวเทียมร่วมกับบริษัท TOT จำกัดมหาชนสันทูตสหรัฐอเมริกาประจำประเทศไทย SIT Graduate Institute Vermont ประเทศสหรัฐอเมริกาสำหรับการอบรมในครั้งนี้นะคะอยู่ในชุดของที่ชื่อว่า Learning to Read Reading to Learn Reading as a Tool for Lifelong Learning สำหรับครั้งนี้เป็นครั้งที่8นะคะวิทยากรคือ Professor Margie Anderson Welcome you all to our series of video conference teacher training program organized by the Distance Learning Foundation TOT Public Company Limited Regional English Language Office of the American Embassy represented by Mr. John s c a c k l e SAT Graduate Institute Vermont the United States This series is learning to read, reading to learn, reading as a tool for lifelong learning. And our guest lecturer is Professor Margie Anderson from SIT Graduate Institute. Welcome, Professor Margie. Thank you. สวัสดีค่ะ I'm so happy to see you all. It's great to be back again. Hello, everybody. And I hope you had a great week. In your classrooms and teaching and doing all of the work that you are doing every day, and so we're happy to be here to support you to continue on with the learning. So we continue to look at the question of teaching reading, and one of the things we've been focusing on in our sessions. This is now the eighth time we've been together in this session. And each time, we've been trying to think about how do we establish what we started to call early on cultures of reading, and also how do you, as teachers, help to support your students in becoming readers of English so that they can use reading as a tool to keep learning. It's a very, it is a circular process. This idea of learning to read and then reading to learn, um, and I think I was just thinking this week about how uh, people kept telling me, "Oh, have you read this article, or have you seen this story, or have you read this book?" And I realized just in my own life that when I um, read things and then talk about them with my Friends and neighbors and family, we are creating kind of communities around whatever it is we're reading. So, in a sense, we're trying to be create the possibility for that with you and your students and your communities. So that's the idea of lifelong learning. You know, maybe we even end up with some um, reading groups in your schools. That use English language texts as a way to commit themselves together to use reading as a way to um, continue to keep learning and improving English. So I'll let uh, Ajahn Narporn speak to that, and then we'll move into our session today. ค่ะอาจารย์มาดีก็บอกว่าทักษะการอ่านนะคะเป็นทักษะที่สําคัญอย่างยิ่งนะคะในการที่จะช่วยพัฒนาทักษะการเรียนรู้ภาษาต่างประเทศหรือภาษาอังกฤษของเรานะคะและในทํานองเดียวกันถ้าเผื่อว่าคือและทักษะการอ่านเนี่ยนะคะก็เป็นเครื่องมือหนึ่งที่ช่วยให้เราเรียนภาษาอังกฤษดีขึ้นนะคะเดียวกันเมื่อเราเรียนรู้ภาษาอังกฤษดีขึ้นเราก็จะอ่านมากขึ้นนะคะอาจารย์ก็บอกว่าเหมือนกับเป็น circular process นะคะคือก็เป็นกระบวนการที่วนไปเวียนมานะคะคือก็อาศัยซึ่งกันและกันนะคะแล้วก็อาจารย์บอกว่าการอ่านเนี่ยนะคะก็เป็นการช่วยสร้างอาจารย์ใช้คําว่า community นะคะซึ่งของเราจริงๆแปลตรงตัวไปว่าชุมชนนี่หมายถึงกลุ่มนะคะกลุ่มของคนที่ชอบทําอะไรเหมือนกันนะคะอย่างเช่นว่ากลุ่มคนที่รักการอ่านนะคะก็มาอ่านมาแชร์ความรู้กันนะคะแล้วก็อาจารย์บอกว่าเป็นการที่ช่วยให้เกิดการเรียนรู้ได้ตลอดเวลานะคะถ้าเรารักการอ่านแล้วก็มาอยู่ในกลุ่มด้วยกันถ้าอาจารย์ดูภาพยนตร์บางเรื่องนะคะเขาก็จะมีกลุ่มรักการอ่านนะคะที่เป็นกลุ่มแม่บ้านเนี่ยค่ะอาจจะไม่ทํางานหรือว่าทํางานแล้วก็วันเสาร์อาทิตย์นี่มาเจอกันแล้วก็จะมาคุยกัน
ก็ว่าจะนัดนัดแนะกันว่าคราวนี้นะไปอ่านเรื่องนี้มาแล้วก็คราวหน้าก็มาคุยมาวิจารณ์กันนะคะอย่างเช่นอย่างนี้เป็นต้นนะคะอันนี้ก็เพราะนั้นเราก็สามารถที่จะเพาะนิสัยอันนี้ได้ให้กับผู้เรียนของเราหรือแม้กับตัวเราเองนะคะเพราะเป็นการส่งเสริมการเรียนรู้ตลอดชีวิตค่ะ Okay thank you so just because one of the things that helps us um, as we become readers of new texts in new languages is trying to remember what we found in a text that we read so i'm doing a little bit of, it's not really a test if i could find the next slide please it's probably the second slide in the series it says session seven there you go so back one thank you so we had a text. I don't know if you remember. It came from the local newspaper in Brattleboro, and we saw it last time. And the title of the text included the word 7-Eleven. It involves something that happened at a 7-Eleven store. So just in a minute we can show you that same text again but just turn to a partner who's sitting beside you uh, in the studio right now and say okay do you remember what this text was about it was something we did at the very beginning of our time last time see if you can remember it was something that happened at a 7-eleven store in brattleboro vermont usa so just take a minute to chat with a partner and then we'll see uh, what you can remember just a couple of minutes and then we'll check in with Bangkok and back in ค่ะอาจารย์มาที่บอกว่าคราวที่แล้วเราได้อ่านเรื่องไปเรื่องหนึ่งนะคะค่ะเอ่อเป็นถ้าอาจารย์ชื่อก็คือ Bradbury Vermont News นะคะก็อาจารย์อยากให้คุยกันนะคะกับอาจารย์ข้างๆว่าจําได้ไหมว่าเป็นเรื่องเกี่ยวกับอะไรค่ะหนึ่งนาทีค่ะอาจารย์ That's okay yeah we can go on Okay, I'd like to. Listen. Okay, if, if whatever you just let us know, I'd maybe let's start with um, uh, our friends in Bangkok. So, what do you remember from the story? This isn't a test. This is just you know anything you can remember from that story you read. It's almost a week. It's a week ago, so that's a long time to retain something. Do you remember anything? And if so, what and how do you remember it? So, anybody from Bangkok who'd like to be a volunteer. ค่ะเชิญเลยค่ะเชิญเลยค่ะท่านอาจารย์ See you too. Uh, last time we uh, read uh, reading about the text about the cat pump pull over on the car. Uh, why I can remember uh, because it's a uh, happen at 7-Eleven and <laughs> because this shop 7-Eleven make me remind because there are many 7-Eleven in Bangkok and in Thailand. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you. So, um, thank you for thank you for being so brave to be the first person to speak. It's always hard to be the first one. Um, but yes. Yeah, so here we have. You remember because um, it's it's interesting maybe that you realize that there are 7-Eleven stores in Bangkok everywhere, and there are 7-Eleven stores in Brattleboro in Vermont and so there's a connection and it was kind of a strange story the gas pump fell over onto the car so again I, I would say that this is an example of um, many things that you know from your own day-to-day -day life and then maybe something kind of strange like maybe you hadn't heard the story about a gas pump falling onto a car you know, recently. So that's very interesting, you know, that, that, that it's the combination of something similar and maybe something unusual that helped you to remember. How about in Hua Hin, anything else you'd like to add? Anything other detail you remember or something unusual about that that you recall? Uh, before that, perhaps Marty, could you please greet Kun Kwan? I think he can hear you. Please, Sawadee uh, Ka. Kun Kwan, you're here to join us. 
Happy to see you. Later, Chima. I I think you have to wait a while, Naka. I I don't think he can hear you at the moment. Okay. okay. Yeah. And what about the Jesus in Huahin? Yeah. Do you have anything to say? Hello. From Huahin. I I read about the gas bomb. Uh, I think it's nobody is injured. Right, right. Nobody die. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, and that's and that's a good a good point because it sounds like kind of a scary story, but in fact, nobody was hurt. So good, good memory on your part. So okay, so what what is helpful is that you recognize that what's important to you is what you're going to take away when you hear the story, read the story, and in reading, we do hope that our students will have retention. We want them to remember things beyond this minute. Because if you think about the theme for this session, we're trying to talk about not only learning to read, but how we then use reading to remember things for a long time. So the idea of lifelong learning. So I would say that uh, everybody who encountered last week's text learned something because you still remember it today. And that's that's the important thing about learning for life is that you remember things beyond the moment in which you learn them. Go ahead, Naraporn. Thank you. ค่ะเอ่ออาจารย์ทั้งท่านอาจารย์ทั้งที่หัวหินแล้วก็กรุงเทพนะคะก็ได้ตอบนะคะว่าก็ได้จําได้นะคะว่าเป็นเรื่อง
ideas a little bit about what students are going to be doing in terms of reading. So it does present challenges. There's no question about it. And so let's go on to the next slide because I we realized that we ended last time with the challenges um, and we'd like to continue with that a little bit because we recognize that while it has a lot of credibility in the field, that doesn't make it easier to do. That doesn't mean that it's a natural thing for everybody. So if I could have the next slide, it talks about extensive reading and the curriculum. And uh, on this side, we're going to come back to these questions, which is where we ended last time. So I'm going to give you a few minutes again with either a partner next to you or uh, somebody sitting next to you at your table. So if you remember the guidelines, which are that we're trying to have students read things that are interesting to them, we're trying to have them read a lot, um, we're having them read things that we don't test or necessarily assess in any way. Okay, so this is maybe an idea that you have just begun to work with, and that's fine. Uh, for most of us, given the rigors of our curriculum and the challenges that we face, it's hard to bring these into your work. So we acknowledge that as we go forward here. But for now, working with a partner, talk about what has worked for you with this idea of broadening the reading text for your students. And then the second one is what are the limitations and challenges that you face? What makes this hard for you to do? And we acknowledge that it's hard. So take a few minutes with partners and then I believe we'll start in Hua Hin to hear a couple comments both about what is working, what's difficult, and then we'll come to Bangkok for the same. Ajahn Naraporn. ค่ะอาจารย์มาร์ตี้ก็ได้พูดถึงเอ็กเซนซีฟรีดิ้งนะคะซึ่งคราวที่แล้วเนี่ยเราก็ได้กล่าวถึงไปบ้างนะคะว
ู้ชมกําลังชมรายการนี้อยู่นะคะถ้ามีคอมเมนต์นะคะความเห็นหรือว่าคําถามอะไรนะคะเกี่ยวกับรายการนะคะหัวข้อที่เรานําเสนอนะคะก็สามารถที่จะหรือสามารถที่จะ SMS มาได้นะคะที่เบอร์ที่ขึ้นนะคะที่หน้าจอนะคะ0 8 6 6 7 7 2 3 1 1 0 8 6 6 7 7 2 3 1 1ค่ะหรือว่าอาจารย์จะ SMS เข้ามาแนะนำตัวเองก็ได้นะคะค่ะอาจารย์ท่านอาจารย์ที่ดูรายการนี้อยู่นะคะเราอยากทราบความเห็นของท่านค่ะขอบคุณค่ะเสร็จแล้วนะคะอาจารย์ค่ะ I think they're ready now Okay Where great Where do you want to start Well um, maybe it, let's start in Bangkok because it looks like we have more people there and then we can go to Hua Hin second um, and we can just find out I would like to hear both 
aspects at the same time. So maybe a couple of comments from Bangkok and then we'll go to Hua Hin. Both what are you finding is working for you? So what are some ideas that you think are good ideas that work? And where are you still finding really difficult times, challenges? So maybe start in Bangkok and then we'll go to Hua Hin. ค่ะท่านอาจารย์ที่กรุงเทพค่ะเชิญค่ะค่ะเชิญค่ะอาจารย์น่ารักมากเลยค่ะอาจารย์บอลเลนเทียตลอดเลยค่ะค่ะค่
นะคะในบางครั้งอะไรเงี้ยแต่ว่าอาจารย์เอาเรื่อง simple story นี่ไปสอนในห้องด้วยค่ะคือเป็นเป็นเอ็กซ์ตร้าจากจากเทคทั่วไปอะค่ะซึ่งซึ่งเราคิดว่ามันก็ไม่ยากมากนักเป็นคําที่สั้นๆไม่ยากมากเพราะฉะนั้นอาจารย์ก็เอาเรื่องนี้ให้จริงๆแล้วคือให้นักเรียนอ่านในห้องในเวลาที่เหลือจากจากจากจากเรียนปกติใช่ไหมคะเสริมเสริมเข้าไปในในในในห้องที่เรียนในเวลาที่อ่านในห้องนะคะค่ะแล้วก็ที่อาจารย์บอกให้อ่าน lunch time นั่นก็เป็นอีกอันหนึ่งอีกอันหนึ่งเป็นเอ็กซ์ตร้าค่ะคือแบบว่าเคยสอนในเทคแล้วในเวลาปกติแล้วแต่ว่าพอเรามีเวลาว่างเนี่ยเราก็เอาเรื่องเดิมที่เคยสอนเขาแล้วเนี่ยค่ะให้มาหัดอ่านซ้ําๆทําให้เขาอ่านได้เพิ่มมากขึ้นนะคะก็อย่างซิมเบิลสตอรี่ที่ให้ไปอ่านซ้ําหลังจากที่เราสอนในห้องก็ส่วนที่เป็นซ้ํานี่เป็นเป็นจากเทคธรรมดาที่เคยสอนแต่ซิมเบิลสตอรี่นี่ใช้ในเป็นการสอนเพิ่มเติมจากหลักสูตรเพิ่มเติมในห้องนะคะโอเคอย่า Uh, I've got the clarification. Uh, the simple story okay. she took from the magazines uh, is the thing that she uses, in fact, in class when they have uh, some time left, you know, from the lesson, and you know, she uses it as an extra reading for the students. So the students read that simple story in class. That's the first thing. Yeah, and the second thing is that. Um, It, well, she decides that you know the simple story s got you know this kind of vocabulary and structure which won't be too difficult or you know more more difficult than you know the text they uh, usually read in class. So that's one thing. But sometimes you know the students still find some vocabulary and structure difficult, and 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 the students will tell her. And because they read in class, and she she helps clarify that. And as for the lunch time that she mentioned, that you know the students read during the lunch time as well. But that's not the simple story from the magazine. That's the text that they have learned in class. And but she encourages the students to read again to reread. You know, yeah, during lunch time. Hmm. Hmm. So very interesting, yeah. So it that sounds to me like you're doing a lot of encouraging of reading. I mean, that sounds like a very reading-rich environment. And what I what I really like, um, well, there's many things, but one thing I really like is the idea that when the students are done doing other activities, they don't have the chance just to, you know. Hang out and do whatever. I mean, I don't know how old your students are. That's another piece of information I would be interested in. But um, that there are other things to read that you have brought in available in the classroom, so that when they're done, they can't just say, "Oh, well, maybe now I'll go, you know, check my cell phone messages." You know, you create. It's part of creating this culture of reading. So I want to uh, acknowledge that and. After Ajahn Narpur and translate this, then we see if somebody else wants to share from Bangkok. Ah, uh, of the student of Ajahn, what is it? Pasom Five, ha, in Grade Five. Grade Five, yeah, she's got Grade Five okay. students, yeah. Oh, lovely, yeah, lovely. ค่ะอาจารย์มารีบอกว่าท่านอาจารย์นี่นะคะเป็นได้ช่วยสร้างบรรยากาศนะคะให้เกิดการฝึกฝนทักษะการอ่านนี้มากเลยนะคะคือนอกจากในเวลานี่นะคะเรียนเสร็จแล้วเนี่ยนะคะตามบทเรียนแล้วก็ยังมีเอ็กซ์ตร้าให้อ่านในเวลาแล้วแถมยังเอ็นเคอร์เรชให้สับสนให้นักเรียนเนี่ยไปอ่านในช่วงพักกลางวันอีกด้วยนะคะเพราะนั้นเป็นการสร้างบรรยากาศการอ่านมากเลยค่ะซึ่งเป็นสิ่งที่ดีมากๆค่ะ Uh, perhaps we can go to Hua Hin now. Yes. Okay. Lovely. From Hua Hin. Any thoughts? Thank you. Well, from to today, from Hua Hin, many teachers are absent because they have to attend a seminar. But um, from the discussion we had last week, um, a number of teachers come from small schools, faraway schools, and children there are. Mostly like very poor kids, and the the main common problem that are facing these teachers is how to get the students' involvement, how to get the students into reading, whether it it is intensive or 
extensive because even the 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 um, the English lessons in class uh, teachers sometimes have hard time in encourage, encouraging them to read. Um, anyway, um, Ajahn Rujira would share with you what has worked for her in applying some techniques in, in getting the students' attention to reading. Good morning. Uh, we, we think that uh, reading English is difficult for Thai learners. Uh, however, we have to use techniques uh, how to persuade, persuade them to pay attention or how to make uh, reading is interesting for them, uh, like uh, let them free from choosing the text they like. Or maybe we have to uh, give them some prize uh, if they can tell the story they, they, they read and uh, can, um, can tell the story uh, that they read and like uh, for the students, for their friends. Uh, or maybe uh, give some a big reward, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> For me, in my class, first, I introduce my student to choose the easy short story or maybe title or non-fiction for the student to read it. And then I set a group of the student and share the knowledge from the easy short story from t title or non-fiction together in the group. Okay. Thank you. Yes, yes I, I appreciate it. We, we have one suggestion okay. from uh, Ajahn who's absent. Um, the other challenge is evaluation, how you could trace the student's um, reading um, capacity. And she suggests that uh, we can arrange a group activities, um, getting all these kids together and let them share what they have read. And um, second is to uh, let them maybe um, let them choose what they like to read or something, choose a topic which um, they can identify like um, eating for beauty, something like that, that would uh, make them find some fun, you know, they find it fun to read, so they would read. And um, uh, timing is also another constraint because you, these kids are like day school kids, so you have to find extra time to, to, to talk to them. To, and uh, I think that's... Uh, uh, last week, if you remember Ajahn Sukian, she was so happy to get your technique of the jigsaw... Um, what you call that jigsaw uh, um, text because for the first time she doesn't have to uh, prod the students into into class and they they willingly came in and they they work together and that is very important to encourage them to work together once they work together to try to read together then um, you could get the interest going thank you yeah oh such a such a wealth of thoughts. Thank you so much. And I'm happy that you're there, those who could come today. No, absolutely. The, the whole idea of, um, of students just feeling like they have some control. I, I don't know. It seems like maybe such a small factor, but it seems to be with reading that it's maybe the most important factor. Because as you point out, time is so precious and it's so hard to add something else into the curriculum when you're already very busy. So your suggestions of um, finding time, giving students the chance to select their own readings, doing something unusual like a jigsaw reading, it's kind of, it's almost like if you surprise students a little bit with what you're doing with reading, then they kind of decide to get involved and get excited. And what we really know, I mean, I don't know if you have this kind of um, dynamic in Thai schools, but for sure it's a dynamic in U.S. schools. And that is around the age of maybe grade, um, 
oh, I don't know, maybe grade three, four, five, six. Um, we're really trying to capture, it's almost like we're putting a net out and we're trying to capture students to become readers. And we do that very much as you were just suggesting with texts that make them interested. So if it's eating for beauty, you know, if it's, um, for and for boys in the United States, it's texts about sports and sports heroes. They want to read about the famous guy who plays cricket or football or basketball, you know. So again, it's really trying to reach those students. And certainly, as you pointed out at the very beginning, sorry, I'm going on so long, it's going to be hard for Ajahn Narapur to translate. Um, you began with the idea that so many of the teachers that you, that you know and that you work with, and this is true throughout um, the Distance Learning Foundation, but teachers are working in very poor, rural, under-resourced environments. So we know, we know that, and so it's not like you can just go out and buy 20 new books to have in the classroom. So that's where, if you remember, I, I don't remember the session, but maybe session three or four, we really talked about the idea that we have to think about texts as being more than books. They have to be things like the Ajahn was just talking about, uh, newspaper articles, labels on materials in the store, new, you know, road signs. We have to, texts, we have to really think about text as being everywhere in order to create enough texts for all of our students to have access. So sorry, Nara, for to go on so long. Thank you, Marty. ค่ะท่านอาจารย์สรดาก็บอกนะคะว่าจริงๆแล้วประเด็นสําคัญก็คือว่าจะให้นักเรียนนี้มีความสนใจอย่างไรนะคะค่ะท่านอาจารย์ส
ซึ่งอาจารย์บอกว่าการที่จะทําให้นักเรียนเนี่ยกลายเป็นนักอ่านนะคะหรือว่าสนใจในการอ่านอยู่ตลอดเวลาเนี่ยนะคะก็เป็นสิ่งซึ่งทั่วโลกก็ทําเช่นกันนะคะครูทั่วโลกก็ทําโดยเพราะในอเมริกานะคะสำหรับเด็กตั้งแต่ระดับอะไรฮะเกรด3ขึ้นมาเนี่ยนะคะก็พยายามหาวิธีที่ทําไงให้นักเรียนเนี่ยรักการอ่านนะคะซึ่งอาจารย์ยกตัวอย่างว่าในอเมริกาเนี่ยเด็กวัยรุ่นเนี่ยส่วนใหญ่ก็จะสนใจพวกนักกีฬานะคะนักกีฬาดังๆเก่งๆสนใจที่จะอ่านเรื่องราวของเขาอันนั้นก็อาจจะเป็นท็อปปิกหนึ่งซึ่งเด็กอเมริกันก็สนใจอันนี้ส่วนในส่วนของเราของเด็กเราสนใจเรื่องอะไรนะคะเราก็ให้เขาอ่านตามที่เขาสนใจนะคะแล้วก็อาจารย์บอกว่าที่ท่านอาจารย์โซดาพูดว่าเมืองไทยเราเนี่ยนะคะมีโรงเรียนอีกมากมายที่อยู่ในท้องถิ่นธุรกันดารห่างไกลแล้วก็ขาดแคลน resources นะคะคือหมายความว่าไม่มีหนังสือหนังหาภาษาอังกฤษพอเนี่ยอาจารย์ก็บอกว่าเข้าใจตรงนี้นะเพราะฉะนั้นการที่จะสนับสนุนให้นักเรียนเป็นนักอ่านเนี่ยไม่จําเป็นต้องอ่านหนังสือเป็นเล่มๆนะคะแค่หนังสือพิมพ์ภาษาอังกฤษที่ตามอาจจะตามโรงแรมโรงแรมในจังหวัดนั้นเนี่ยเขาเขาทิ้งแล้วเราไปขอมาก็ได้นะคะหรือว่าอาจจะเพียงแค่ว่าอะไรฮะเลเบิลส์นะคะอย่างที่ท่านอาจารย์มาตี้เอามาให้ดูในเซสชันแรกๆจําได้ไหมคะพวกเลเบิลส์ของสินค้าที่ต่างประเทศส่งขายต่างประเทศหรือว่าต่างประเทศเอาเข้ามาขายในเราเนี่ยก็จะมีเลเบิลส์เป็นภาษาอังกฤษตรงนั้นก็ให้เอามาให้นักเรียนฝึกอ่านได้อ่านเพิ่มเติมได้ก็เป็นการสร้างเสริมทักษะการอ่านเหมือนกันนะคะไม่ว่าจะเป็นอะไรนะคะเอ่อซายน์สป้ายต่างๆนะคะที่เราเขียนไว้สําหรับให้นักท่องเที่ยวด้วยเป็นภาษาอังกฤษก็นั้นก็ฝึกให้ให้นักเรียนเราอ่านได้นะะก็เป็น extensive reading เหมือนกันไม่จะไปต้องอ่านหนังสือเป็นเล่มๆนะคะเพราะว่าเข้าใจว่าจริงๆแล้วก็เป็นเ,เรื่องลำบากเหมือนกันในหลักการที่เราจะหาซื้อหนังสือภาษาอังกฤษนะคะถ้าเราอยู่ในทินที่ห่างไกลค่ะ Yes m a d e Okay thank you So now that we have gone on and on about extensive reading uh, we do have to go back and think about intensive reading too because We don't do one thing at the, ex at the expense of the other. So thank you. So let's just look through a little bit what intensive reading is, what extensive reading is, and then I'll give you some time uh, to think about which one you would use at what point. And you want to be thinking about this from the perspective of the age of your students. No matter what age there are, they are there's a point to do each one. We don't abandon one form of reading for the other one, but so. But let's just look to compare and contrast. So intensive reading is really, I would say, what we think about as happening usually in the classroom as part of the curriculum, and we have a number of analysis points that we're using. So usually in intensive reading. Um, there is a linguistic focus, and you are asking students to look at a particular part of language. Might be a form of speech, might be a phrasal structure, but you're asking them to look at something specifically, and um, and you are asking them to analyze language when they use that text. Um, the difficulty of the text is usually hard. It's it's intentionally supposed to challenge the students to um, to see if they can know more, if they can um, move beyond whatever limitation they have got. So the difficulty is usually a little bit beyond maybe what they're capable of or right at that level. The amount of text, hopefully, therefore, is small. You can't have a very difficult text with a lot of language analysis and then have many pages of text. So you're talking about a small text. Usually, uh, in terms of selection, the teacher chooses because if you look at linguistic focus and difficulty, um, if the teacher hasn't selected the text and it's so difficult. You're not, and the teacher then won't know even what linguistic focus to put on the text. So usually, this is very much a classroom-oriented activity. And what material? Typically, all the students are doing the same text. This is so they can work in pairs around the same text, 
It's so the same comprehension questions can apply. So usually everybody's doing the same thing and the teacher has selected it. There's a couple more criteria, but I'll let uh, Naraporn describe those quickly.อาจารย์อยากจะให้เปรียบเทียบระหว่างอินเทนซีฟรีดิ้งกับเอ็กซ์เทนซีฟรีดิ้งนะคะอาจารย์ก็บอกว่าจริงๆแล้วเนี่
nervous. And I think this is the linguistic focus difference. With fluency, we want the student to feel comfortable with that they might not know all the words. It's creating the sense of being able to be relaxed with reading. Because as we discussed early on in this session series, to create a culture of reading, we're trying to make reading be something, reading in English, to be something that uh, people are not afraid of, that they will choose to do. So therefore, also, we want the difficulty to be easy because we want to create feelings of success. So our colleague who uh, brings in the simple magazine articles to use in between other activities, she's making it possible for the students to feel successful. And this is a goal. We don't want them to say, oh, it's too hard, I can't read. Um, still, we keep the amount fairly significant. We say, let's try for a book a week. That's a lot. Uh, even for native speakers of a language, to read a book a week for many people feels like a lot. But that's what we're aiming for. So we're thinking about simple materials. We ask the learner to select, and that's been a success story that you all shared, that when the students get to choose, they will read more. And which material? Well, in this case, of course, if every student is selecting something they're interested in, everything re they read all read something different. And this allows for, you know, back in classroom, a really interesting exchange of ideas if you choose to do it that way. So again, that's a lot of material in our foreign story. And go ahead with all that. <laughs> 